challenge of reading dyslexic uh, writing <laughs> when you're a teacher. It could be grass. I hadn't thought of that. I was thinking maybe it was dress because the, um, by the, somebody who mixes up sounds might very well hear the d as a g and then with the r and then s. <coughs> Frequently, students will just assume that if you put the letter down, it will say what its name is. So, but, you know, you're all right. I mean, it, who knows? Who knows uh, what it is? But, um, but this is the challenge that we're up against. And one of the reasons why uh, phonetic spelling, which is very popular uh, in terms of, you know, with teaching, is can be just a real disaster for a child with dyslexia because they, um, they they don't have you know that to go they don't have the sound symbol foundation to be able to really spell phonetically and have it make any sense at all. So um, so <clears throat> One of the problems that dyslexic students experience is that their teachers, like most adults, tend to conceptualize words in their written form. When you think of this, if, uh, if I ask you to think of the word, um, to consider the word uh, uh, B, you know, Chances are you're not necessarily thinking of the letter B, you're thinking of a, you know, a bumblebee or to be, or, and you're seeing that word spelled. Well, um, the, uh, <clears throat> therefore, most of us don't, unless we are specifically told to pay attention to the sounds and letters, we really don't do it. And so, Thinking of how the sounds are blend together in words is not something that is, comes naturally to many teachers unless they're very specifically taught how to do that. Um, and the thing is, is that students with dyslexia, children and adults with dyslexia, do not have a sense of the individual sounds in words. That is, they think, if they hear the word sun, they just think of it as sun, not s uh, mm. So we have to really teach them um, those, the sound symbol connections and the fact that words are in fact made up of sounds and the symbols that represent those sounds. Um, so one of the, uh, actually one, the biggest, the, probably the biggest the largest number of, um, in terms, if you think about learning disabilities and the and IEPs and what they're about and so on, the biggest issue for learning challenge that most students have is has something to do with print, writing, reading, spelling, and so on. So, uh, so it's a huge area, and. Many of our students, again, 20 to 30 percent, I think it, I think we have close to 40 percent by now um, of children in school throughout the grades who are read or spell or write below, below basic uh, grade level uh, expectations. There is also a big, uh, there's a big overlap between people with dyslexia and people with ADHD. Somewhere between a 30 to 50 percent uh, overlap or comorbidity. So it is very common to have, see a student with, um, with dyslexia who also has ADHD and, you know, ADHD very often students have trouble with 
writing or with reading as well. So <clears throat> that's just a statistic for you. Um, what happens in school is that children in grades one through three work on learning to read. The sound symbol, understanding how the alphabetic code and so on. Once they hit grade four, then things switch so that now students are reading to learn. So they're, um, so no longer, in fourth grade, no longer are children working on the alphabetic code. They're reading content area material to learn other material. So if they don't acquire uh, foundational reading skills and writing skills in the first three grades, then they, their uh, ability to keep up with their peers just sinks from that time on. So another argument for why it's really important to intervene uh, as early as possible and to do much preventive teaching as possible. Um, uh, and again, another research fact is that uh, just 25% chance, only a 25% chance of a student with a reading problem reaching grade level reading in his school experience <laughs> if the problem is not identified and proper forms of intervention given by the start of third grade. So unless there's fairly dramatic intervention, and it's possible, but it's much harder uh, once you get a student who's uh, older. It takes four times longer to remediate a student with a reading problem in fourth grade as it does a student with a reading problem in first grade. So it's to the benefit of everyone, um, you know, the child, most importantly, uh, taxpayers who have to pay for special education costs and so on, and all the things that come down the pike, it's much more cost effective to do that intervention very, very early. Which is why, uh, <clears throat> why it's so important to bring this information uh, and to make this information, uh, to disseminate it as broadly as possible because our public policy makers need to understand the dire consequences of, of not providing early intervention and prevention for our youngsters. Um, uh, the, uh, because we had this very uh, unfortunate model of identifying children with uh, any kind of learning disabilities, we had for many, many years what was called the discrepancy formula. So children had to progress in school for at least a couple of years until they were far enough along to be at least two grade levels below in achievement before they could receive any kind of special education uh, intervention or support. And that was a disaster because, you know, now that we know how important early intervention is, if we don't do it really quickly and we wait for a child to fail, there's a much lower chance that the child is ever going to be able to catch up uh, with their grade level. Yes? Is that still the case? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> It's yes and no. Right? Yes and no. It's uh, uh, districts. Well, under the uh, the legislation that uh, the the uh, disability legislation that covers public schools, grades K through 12, and to some extent even a little beyond that, known as the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA. Um, when it was reauthorized in 2004, they got the legislation does not require a discrepancy anymore. So what they do, uh, what what the legislation provides funding 
for uh, what they call response to intervention, or RTI, if you're familiar with that. And the, under that, the idea is to regularly do progress monitoring and pick up when a child is struggling with reading so that that child can get immediate intervention. And so generally, I, the idea is the lowest 30% of the class will get extra help 